Bloomberg View, Eli Lake from CircaNews.com, Sarah Carter. Eli, let's start with you. Welcome to the program. Uh, all right, so incidental surveillance. This is what Devin Nunes was talking about. Okay, but what bothered him? Now we find out Susan Rice seemingly is purposefully unmasking the names of people, but only Trump transition team's member or maybe even then candidate Trump, what those conversations were if they were picked up, quote, incidentally. How, why is that dangerous and why should the American people understand the seriousness of this? Well, I, I want to just stress that I don't know other things that she requested to be unmasked, but the way I understand this is that the National Security Council staffer who was brought in for Trump, who was doing a review of the unmasking policy, noticed an anomaly in the patterns of requests from Susan Rice to unmask the names that were incidentally collected in summaries of basically raw intelligence of monitored communications. That was then discovered by the staffer, uh, whose name has been out there. He then takes that to the general counsel's office in the White House, who then look into this some more and have tried to make this available to first Devin Nunes, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, but also Adam Schiff, the ranking member of that committee, and they've offer, also offered this to the Senate Intelligence Committee. All right, and Sarah, so why would Susan right. Rice, as it, especially as it relates to everything that we have been talking about, take incidental surveillance and ask, this is raw intelligence, ask for the unmasking, but only seemingly in the case of the Trump transition team or perhaps even Trump as a candidate. How dangerous is that when the White House, an administration, a sitting administration, is surveilling and using legitimate surveillance to basically surveil on an opposition party? Uh, Sean, it's extremely concerning because I think those are the questions that need to be asked directly of Susan Rice. I attempted to reach out to her a number of times just to ask her those exact same questions, but she did not return my phone calls. Shocking. But what I, I, want to I want to step back because what we're looking at is not just the expansion. Remember last week, Sean, you and I discussed this. 702, Section 702 of the 12333 Executive Order is supposed to protect Americans from being unmasked. But if we go back to the stories that we wrote last week, in 2011, that was expanded. The FISA court signed off under the Obama administration to allow for more leniency and unmasking. So it wasn't like... It, it's almost as if it was legalized without us knowing it. And so the unmasking was allowed to occur. So in 2011, then in 2015, they relaxed the laws even more. So what they were able to do is, and we know, we know it went to Susan Rice. We know uh, uh, former uh, CIA Clapper, director Brennan. John Brennan was allowed to do this and Clapper. So they had the ability to request unmasked, unmasked. American intercept, raw intelligence, foreign to foreign, that, raw intelligence, that should never classified. have, even if it was for legitimate intelligence gathering, they're basically using that as a means to spy on innocent Americans without the benefit of a warrant. Good way to put and it. That's, and that's certainly, yes, and that's certainly what intelligence sources are saying. They're saying, look, this isn't right. just about just the unmasking. It's about why did they specifically unmask Susan Rice in particular at this point from July. The, right, we're going all the way back to July. What could be the logical reason short of they wanted to use legitimate intel intelligence gathering as a ruse to get to the Trump transition team and maybe even candidate Trump if it goes back to July? If it goes back to July, these are the questions they have to ask. And, and according to the sources that I've spoken with, it goes back to July. It happened again in November, and then it happened exponentially after November through January. So they were looking at this. Other sources that we've spoken to just recently, as of today, wow. have said to us, and these are high-level senior intelligence sources, said these questions need to be asked. Now, they could have been looking at it because right, I, some I sources break. are saying... But, okay. All right, standard operating procedures is you do not identify the identity of an American because you don't have a warrant for that, that surveillance. Standard operating procedures when you're writing up a report, they would usually put in American and identify nobody. But in this specific case, specific cases, we have Susan Rice asking for the names of those people. More with Eli and Sarah right after this break. 